coming up on this episode of Free Lunch. Awesome. I think first of all, you got to look at it from a die to self situation in that in that because I know I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you, Aaron. Honestly, I, people I are gonna agree. go, I, but I'm always dying to self. Yeah, but I need them to die a little bit. You need them to die a little bit, but then <laughs> that's something that to your point, tell him that his mother need to die a little bit. <laughs> I'm sick of dying. Oh, yeah. And we watched that sister. <laughs> oh, it uh, disgusted me. The Oh, I could vomit thinking of the just disgust. I was telling my wife, if we ever get a dog, I'm not cleaning after. I'm not cleaning up after it. It's gonna mm. be your dog. You're cleaning it, and look at just sucker free. <laughs> just, every single day, I'm out there walking this freaking dog, picking up his nasty crap with the doggy bags, and my hand is filling it through the bag. I could feel it mush. Not thirty quarters. Huh? You know what else I could dig? What's up? I could dig 20 minute messages on Sunday. I could absolutely dig 20 minute messages That'd be nice. on Sunday. <laughs> I think that's the couple's job. To put the boundary the, down. The absolutely. couple's job is to let the in-laws know where the line is. Yeah. I don't the, think it's, it's I don't the, think the, the in-laws actually know that. It's themselves. the in-laws once the line is drawn, the in-laws have to respect that. You lose something in being inconsistent yes. with your relationships and and definitely with in-law relationships. Mm -hmm. It's Free Lunch Season 3 with a special thanks to our sponsors, Bullseye-LLC.com, Ready, Aim, Bullseye, where safety is our ammo, Gen1LLC.info, Generation 1 Logistics, taking pride in putting our carriers first and helping owner-operators get premium loads, stay organized, and increase profit, and ScarletOakCandleCo.com, the self-care experts. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Freestyle Gospel, a.k.a. The Real Free. I want to reintroduce you guys to a former guest on the show, but now he will be, as we go into season three, a periodic co-host buddy of mine because he's just so excellent with words. So, uh, Aaron, what's up, Aaron? What's going on, I, I I contemplated quite a bit before saying your name uh, if I'd follow it with a hand clap, but then I decided against it. No, it's okay. I mean, the crowd gave me such a rousing ovation the I, last time I was I, here. But I have to explain this because, you know, other people might hear this and be like, you know, that's kind of messed up. But I had to go against it because when I'm on the show every single episode mm -hmm. and I introduce me, I don't get a clap. So because you don't get a clap, I don't get a clap. Yeah, but, but it's only because of your role now. Oh, See? I don't okay. get a clap because I'm the okay. host. I got you. I and got so you. the co-host... You kind of take on the burden yeah. of not getting the applause. I, I get I get promoted to the big chair next to the big chair, and I you know these are the the heavy wears the crown. I guess these <laughs> these are the small <laughs> beginnings of paying your dues. Ah, that's fine. All right, I've been there. I you can do that. First pay with offering up, sacrificing your applause. Uh huh. Do you want coffee after this? Because I can run and get coffee. That counts as a do as well. No. No. <laughs> I won't send you across the bridge for cheesecake <laughs> either. Absolutely you want me to sing, sing in the hallway? Sing, no. in, sing in the hallway in the cold? <laughs> no, absolutely not. But uh, so I'm really, really happy, guys, to have uh, a co-host at all. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention. Um, over the last four months, I have been scouting through social media for a you know, periodic co-host um, because I just think that's it's easier to do, you know? Uh, it's fun that way. Um, for the first entire season one, I did all of that on my own, uh, right from my shabby bedroom closet. Uh, so those were the started from the bottom days. Um, and it's cool. Like, I've had people more than once, you know, tell me that... Um, I'm capable of doing it, you know, by myself. I just don't want to. Like, it's boring, right? Um, and I think it's a way to kind of, like, finagle or work into, like, the daily, day-to-day, -day, like, work schedule. Uh, connectedness with, like, other, you know, acquaintances, friends, family is like, hey, why don't you come in uh, to the studio and, like, you know, do an episode, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I dig it. I dig it. Uh, coming at least here today... What was what was the 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 hours that preceded you entering the studio today like? Ooh, yeah, no, honestly, it's funny. So Aaron still has a a, a day job, by the way, guys. Yes, uh, very much so. Though. He has yet to take the leap, um, <laughs> but I feel he will soon. You know, 
Don't tell my boss that. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I will. There's been enough leaping happening. I was just about to say. Don't uh, from what I've heard. But. So, no, but that's been the funny thing. So, you know, work was work today. You know, a lot of craziness. But coming in, and this is something I actually didn't get a chance to tell you before we got started here. Um, we were at um, the, f I forgot what the festival is exactly titled was last night. Um, but Israel, Israel, Houston. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we at were Kingdom at Kingdom Life. Yeah, I was Kingdom supposed to go Life. there. Yeah, we were honestly, I expect, I, I will say, I thought, I was like, I wonder if he's gonna show up, but yeah, yeah. Um, uh, my girlfriend's dad got us, got us, you know, told us about it, got us registered and everything. So we went yesterday. It was really powerful. It was, it was a great, great. That's dope. Afternoon. Now, we were kind of confused the way yeah. it was being built, or at least at our church, okay, uh, Cornerstone, when they talked about it. Yep, it was hard to kind of gauge what exactly was supposed to be mm -hmm. like was it supposed to be a concert was it supposed to be a revival was it supposed to be a conference to me it felt very much like a revival like you had like you was had, it only him and his band nope so that's the thing so it started Same out or? him and his band started out so they started out praise and worship there with him and his band and then they had like uh, a, a sex a session for a prayer session and then they had a uh, a message and then after the message then him and his band came back on for like the last like 30, 45 minutes. And then they played for like another, you know, for the end of the show. But that's why I say it felt more like a revival more so than a, than like a service or a, okay. a conference. So it wasn't like any like preaching. No, there was. But it was quick. Like yeah. the, the message was that that's the one thing I, I, I mentioned to uh, Siri afterwards that I, that I found to be like interesting was like everything was timed out very well. You know, oh, okay. to the point where it was like boom, 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 boom. And even the message as powerful as the message was. 20 minutes, maybe 15 in and I out. I could dig it. Yeah. You know what nice. I mean? Nice. So I said the whole, the whole, the whole entire thing, we started, I think, at 6 30 and we got out by like quarter to 10, 9 30, quarter to 10. You know what else I could dig? What's up? I could dig 20 minute messages on Sunday. I could absolutely dig 20 minute messages That'd be nice. on Sunday. <laughs> like, absolutely. <laughs> I had, there was the church uh, I, I go to in Milford. I met someone who, um, at the time, I was working at the school, and uh, one of the teachers, they told me that they, you know, go to my the same church as me. And I was like, but wait a minute. Don't you, like, the, so the school that I was working at the time with mm -hmm. this teacher is in Bridgeport. Okay. All right, so my church is in Milford. This, the school I'm working at is in Bridgeport. Uh, so the teacher, she's like, yeah, I go, I go to, I go to your same church. I see you sometimes. And I'm like, but hold on, don't you live in New York? And they were like, yeah. So this person every day mm -hmm. for, for work is traveling from New York to Bridgeport for work. Then on Sunday weekend comes <laughs> and she's traveling for church. Now this is my church. I've been going there like years before her for quite some time. And I love my church. I think it's a great church. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think enough to tra travel. I, would, I was just about to say apartment, uh, um, yeah, condo, like so, a house, so, hour and a, a half, man. a tree house. <laughs> Drive, like I don't know, man. That the church is within. That's what I started telling myself. That like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, how long are you willing to travel for a church? Service? Forty-five minutes. Um, because because Stratford, Stratford to New Rochelle was about forty-five minutes on a Sunday morning. I so. still I still say negative. Well, here's the thing. I'm sorry. It was it was funny because so you're you're now still doing that. No, not we haven't done. We did that. Like that's the church I grew up in. So that was where okay. we did that. That's what's your travel was, like now. If you, if you go to church on a Sunday. What's... So Milford would so it's about 20, 30, 35 minutes, something somewhere yeah. in that ballpark. Um, I'm a 25 minute guy. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the max there. See, anything under an hour for me is okay. Yeah. Once we start pushing an hour, once, that's it. Once we start pushing 50 minutes, that's once where I'm we, like. Once okay. we start pushing 30 minutes, I'm <laughs> telling you I'm looking for the online service. See, it, Are you it, guys streaming? It, it, <laughs> <laughs> what are the options for streaming? You know, I've been trying to think of like, I've been playing with the idea of, because, you know, being in studio, uh, recording the podcast and having like a, a video, a visual element mm -hmm. is so like fun. It's really, really cool. The snippets or whatever, people that follow, um, you know, the page at free lunch, shameless plug, right? Never uh, shameless, but always a plug. Always a plug at free lunch on Instagram or Facebook, F R I I lunch. Um, or the real free, um, they're able to see like little clips of like video and like see you know a lot of the hilarious or funny moments we have in studio. But I've been trying to think of like a a, a mechanism for which to 
kind of show the entire v- video segment, mm-hmm. right? But I kind of want it to be like exclusive or or Behind something the- special for the audience and the followers that are like really committed. Yeah. So a couple of ideas have come to my mind. Uh-huh. Just as like you were sharing your hilarious stories, um, was I thought about the Patreon? Yep. Right. The Patreon is always a really dope community. That's the first thing that came to my mind. To um, be honest. And those people who like you know sow seeds into the platform every month after month, um, as low as I think five dollars a month, or people you know who are able to sow more up to fifty dollars a month, um, and they've like thus far have been able to get you know, their own different tier benefits that come with that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the video would be like another really cool thing. So I was thinking like maybe uploading the content as like a a private YouTube link Mm -hmm. and then just only dropping the link inside the Patreon. Mm -hmm. So that was one idea. And then I thought of um, Spotify uh, because Spotify now allows you to do exclusive episodes. Well, they let you upload a video version of your podcast. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, so people who are listening to your podcast normally already on Spotify, mm-hmm. they could choose to listen to it still or decide to see an actual video. Of it. Oh, yeah, so that's definitely So that's an cool too. That's definitely. A- um, but I think I really I'm always like thinking about the fans. Like I run mm-hmm. I really really want to um and those specifically the fans that are spending their money into the platform, yep. sewing into <laughs> You know, the vision. So I think I might go with the Patreon idea first. Yeah. And see then, how that goes. Mm-hmm. And it might be like an excuse, exclusive thing with the Patreon. Like yeah. meaning, an exclusive meaning like early access. See, that's... So that's the better word. Yeah, I was going to say Not that's, exclusive, but I'll upload it maybe to Spotify later for others to be able to, you know, on a mass level see it. But maybe Patreon getting early access, you know, first. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a good model. I've seen folks do that before, especially with the early yeah. access because... If you have something, you know, and I'm like you were saying, this yeah. this might be season three. So, you know, fast forward another six yeah. months, you in season 20 and you got, you know, content for season 21, 22 already set yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you're part of the Patreon, go ahead and uh, and do yeah. that. So, And actually, I mean, the, uh, the seasons go, you know, a full year, 12 mm-hmm. months. So yep. season three will be from March 30th. Now you know this this month. Yep. Uh, till March thirtieth. Next one. Next, next year, twenty twenty three. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Man. Um, I'm also looking forward to uh, the the painting back at home to be done in the nursery. Um, mm-hmm. as we prepare for my uh my baby girl. Oh, I was gonna ask. Yeah. Congratulations. Nice. Yeah, we found out the 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 gender um this past weekend at the nice. gender reveal. So I'll have my fourth girl. Oh wow, the very yeah. nice. very nice. Yeah, we thought, you know, it might be the time, you know, for me to spit out a boy, yeah. you know, still or <laughs> produce one, but uh it looks like I'm a girl dad. Yeah, no, dude, those are the best. Girl dads are the best. I mean, granted I'm one of four three boys, but like I can tell you right now the softest I ever see my father act is when it comes to my sister. Yeah, see that's the thing. I'm not people think because I'm a girl dad, mm-hmm. like cuz I have all these girls that I'm like soft on them, and I'm not. I'm not, yeah, I'm not that dad. And, uh, okay. But what's what's it, what's ironic is that, and they're all daddy's girls, like so they love the heck out of me. Uh-huh. So I guess when people on the outside looking in see that uh-huh. bond or connect, yep. they just go, "Oh, he he." That's because he must spoil the heck out of them. And I'm so the opposite. Like I I parent the yeah. same across the board. Like even with my uh, uh, son Xavier, um. That we have, you know, uh, through the marriage mm-hmm. uh, that my wife, you know, brought to the marriage. Uh, he's eleven, so he's the youngest out of all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, the same way I would like discipline him or am with him, mm-hmm. I'm the same with my my daughters. You know, I I, I hold everybody, you know, accountable. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, I hated that when I was growing up. Like it's it's like me, and I have what one, two, three, four. It's like five of us boys, mm-hmm. and then. One sister. Oh, yeah. And we watched that sister. <laughs> oh, it uh, disgusted me. The, oh, I could vomit thinking of the just disgust <laughs> in how she got away with so much. See, in my family, because, so we have bookends. We have, you know, my, we're all within 10 years. So it's four of us within 10 years. My sister's the oldest. 
Hold on, whoa, say, hold on. So there's four, four of us within 10 years. So my sister was born oh, in 86. Okay. My baby brother was born in 96. Oh, I thought you, you were saying between each of you is 10 years. Oh, no, 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 I'm no, like, no, God no. dang. <laughs> the heck <laughs> are we doing? <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. uh, yeah, it's for 40 years. Oh, my gosh. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so that's how the breakdown is. And so in my house, it was kind of, so my sister's the only girl. So there's certain things that she just got just being the only girl off the bat. Um, my baby brother was the only, he's, he's the, li- he's the youngest. And also he had like, he had a really traumatic episode, not episode, but incident when he was a baby that okay. he almost did not survive. So wow. yeah, he swallowed a, a connect four toy Oh wow! Yeah, when okay. he was, when he was an infant. And so he almost didn't survive that through that experience and a few other things. Like he's the, on top of the fact he's the baby. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. he he got away with some things. He you know probably shouldn't have gotten away with. Yeah. And so I mean, and it's, when you look at it from that context and that scope, it's like, well, I mean, yeah, he's gonna get away with the occasional thing. Yeah. So you know what? But I think that I think you the kids that are at the like bottom of the totem pole, like mm-hmm. the young ones. Yeah, I think the only reason why they end up getting away with things is really because out of just sheer natural parent exhaustion. Absolutely. That just comes with like Absolutely. parenting multiple kids. So oh, it's yeah. like oh, so yeah. it's like, hey, by the time you came around, young guy, mm-hmm. it's like uh I'm just I don't feel like raising my voice anymore. <laughs> I don't feel like chasing after you or do, like it's just it's draining. Yeah. It's so much energy. So but I think again, I, I was very like, you know, intuitive. I paid attention when I was young mm-hmm. and as my parents parented, you know, as kids. So when I had, you know, started to have kids, I was like, listen, I am not going to let them drain me, mm-hmm. you know? So from the first kid, I, you know, went on this journey, you know, set out to be this uh, patient and very relaxed okay. parent. Because nice. for me, it was like, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Mm-hmm. So my goal is like, I will out survive you children (laughs) like you know what i mean and like you know not like in a like life or death sense but just like it's when it comes to like great hair Mm -hmm. my energy energy oh yeah i am not going to let you children suck me dry do you know how many years i heard my mom say i got four gray hairs (laughs) and she would say jessica aaron matthew and daniel those are my four gray hairs like you know funny obviously for for fun but it's it is something that now I don't have any kids, but this is something that I've heard from my friends that do have kids or even just like our conversations that we've had with you. And like I said, the way my folks kind of went about it, it is definitely like and my sister would say this to her. She was like, I was the test kid because she was the first one. She's like, yeah, I'm the test kid. She's like, by the time they got to you, <laughs> I'm the second oldest. So she's like, by the time they got to you, they kind of had some things figured out. You were the first boy. So they had some test stuff with you, too. Yeah, but yeah. other than that, by the time they got some, you know, Matthew and Daniel, they they was they had it. So yeah. and it, it's coasting. The, it's exactly coasting in a way. And it's like, you know what? You guys are all right. You'll, you'll figure it out. So what is the what what would you say is the. With you not having kids yet, mm-hmm. what is the, what's as you look forward or look, in, look ahead and see yourself having children, mm-hmm. what do you imagine will be amongst the hurdles for you? Like just as an individual oh, yeah. and seeing yourself, how you are today, present day, the things about you, your characteristics, mm-hmm. your, your personality, what do you see being the most challenging thing as a dad? When you, um, when you become a dad, I think the two. I think there's two. One is going to be my own um, uh, frustration, like frustration level for me can get fast. So like, oh, okay. you know, patience. Yeah, yeah. Patience is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, so yeah. patience. I'm gonna have to learn a little bit better patience. Like I'm. I feel like my threshold, if ten is like, you know. Okay, okay, we can we can keep trying, we can keep trying trying. One is you ain't get it the first time, I'm going off handle. I'm somewhere in that like four to six range, oh, and I need man. to be in that like eight to nine range, yeah. you know what I mean? So I think that's one of the things. But I I've heard that that comes, you know, immediate not immediate, but it comes like because it's your child, you love them, you wanna and yeah. I think that's one. And also I think um and this is something Well, I think it's one thing that comes uh not necessarily because it's your child. Mm-hmm. I think it I think it. I think my opinion. I mean, it might, it might be an unpopular one. Uh, is that 
it comes with intentionality. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think it'll just naturally come just because it's your kid. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, if I'm honest, sometimes I think as parents, we can get uh, frustrated or, you know, lash out, you know, with our children in certain ways, uh, probably more and find ourselves being more short or more easily frustrated with our children mm-hmm. because, in fact, it's our children. Yeah. Like, okay. you feel some sense of, like, you should, you should be better because you're an extension mm-hmm. of me. Yeah. You know, right? Okay. Like, so if you're not getting it, my mm-hmm. child, mm-hmm. like, I envision you would get it mm-hmm. when I had an offspring, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, you could actually find yourself more easily frustrated because okay. then, you know, you then go out and, you know, maybe you're a teacher or mm-hmm. maybe you, you know, mentor and you work with other people's kids mm-hmm. and you find yourself being able to be more patient. Yeah. yeah. And you're exactly, like, hey, exactly. why am I freaking... Going off the middle. No, and that's an interesting way to look at it because it is. It's one. It's like that extension of yourself, even though you know this is still another person. But yeah, it's still, yeah, it's like yeah. this is you know your other person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I think that's one. And mm-hmm. I think the other thing for me, and this is something that I hope I get better at by the time I have kids, or my kids are going to force me to yeah, get yeah. better at it. Um, time, time management. I am not a great time management person at all. I'm a very you know, eh. Like it'll outside of the handful of things that I do have to be on time for, I'm very much just like, nah, like I'll be there. Yeah. Like I'll show up. Like they know, they know I'll be there. Like that kind of thing. So, um, so time, are you are you saying that you'll you'll you say things like, yeah, they know I'll be there, and then you don't be there? No, no, no I'll be there. I'll be there, but I might be there, you know, within an hour of it being over. <laughs> like I'll I'll show up, get a plate, and be like, all right, cool. I hey. saw me. All right, cool. I'm out. So <laughs> I am the show up guy. At least. I am the show. I up at guy. least showed up. They know I'm gonna show you, up. You. You wave your finger at the friends that didn't even show up. <laughs> I am How about show that? Up. I will show up. And so I think that's one of the biggest things is like time management for me mm-hmm. um, and understanding. Like I look at how my folks did it. Like I said, there were four of us t- within 10 years. Me and my brothers are two, two, and two. Mm-hmm. So in what is that? Two, four, six. In six years, that's all of us, right? To all boys right there. And the way that the time management had to go to make sure somebody was always home to make sure that if we had a game or something or a practice we had to go to, like I remember in this, I was just talking to um, one, I was talking to Jared about this um, cause he was laughing cause he's got two kids and he was talking about how it would have been like with three kids. Um, and I told him like, I remember when my mom had, was coming home from work. My dad was, he was home. My mom was coming home from work. I had a baseball game on one side of Stratford. My brother had a baseball game on the other side of Stratford my baby brother had another game on the other side of Stratford. Messing with me, none of y'all would be in baseball. <laughs> all within all within about, a, I think, like a 20-minute span. So it went, my dad drove me first because my game started first. He dropped me off like a half hour before the game. Parents, as soon as the parent showed up, he was like, all right, cool, somebody's here, go. <laughs> and and yeah. then from there, he went to my other brother's game, dropped him off at his game, went to my third brother's game, went there. My mom got off of work, went to my brother's game, met up with my dad. They changed cars. Then my dad went to the other brother's game, picked him up, came back to my game, saw the end of my game, picked me up, and then we all went home. So, like, that time managementness that's mm. the part where I look at it like, yeah, I'm going to have to learn that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, no, that's amazing. Your parents really loved you guys. Oh, yeah, no, I, 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 I got that. I do. I love my parents. They did a lot for it. They did I'd way be, worse than us. I'd, I'd be like, I'm sorry, uh, kid. It looks like this season we won't be playing baseball. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I heard, I heard, I heard track is nice. I heard tra- everybody's all in the same place. <laughs> For, forget track. Hey, I hear the backyard's looking real nice. You know, I just put some. Uh, you see that tree? I, th- that tree is out there. You I know that tree. Promise, I'll fill in all the patches in the yard <laughs> this season. Yeah, man. Oh man, I am so freaking exhausted, bro. Yeah. I just can't shake it. I'm drinking all this tea. Yeah. I'm trying to get the caffeine in me, guys. I'm just so I've been painting for two weeks. Mm. Are you trying almost, to? Paint. Are you almost done though? You you got to be almost done. You've been painting for two weeks. <sighs> no, because I suck. No, it's because look, it's because I'm not a painter. <laughs> I'm a serial creative, right? Okay. I do a lot of other things. Okay, I just painting is not one of them. Painting walls. Mm. I paint art. I do that. But yeah, man, 
and it's well, it's my second room in my defense. So okay. it's, not, it's not been yeah. two weeks painting one room. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Don't gotcha. make me look that horrible. Eric. No, no. You see, I'm not gonna right. lie. I was trying to lob it up. Like, okay, you're almost done, right? Two weeks, no. and you're like, no. I'm, and I'm I was almost like, done. <laughs> I'm almost done with my second room. Nice. Yes. So okay. thank thank God, I've been you know, uh, ha- having the the young daughter of mine help me. Mm. You know, after school, <laughs> hurry up with that homework because we got more painting to do. That sounds about right. All right, hurry it up. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. You got dishes also. All right, hurry up and do those dishes. Uh huh. You know, and, and then and then come help me paint. I was gonna say, and it was funny because I was the kid, and this also kind of puts a a, a little uh, uh, limelight into how how I acted as a kid because I was definitely a, I was gonna say I was a squirrely kid, but I definitely was the kind of kid that took advantage of certain situations that I had. So like if that was like, oh, do the dishes, I would make sure that I did the slowest dishes. Cause by the time I'm done with the dishes, dinner's ready. Aaron, <laughs> Aaron couldn't be my little brother in the house. Cause I would have saw all through his game. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he he would have took his time. He would have still took his time mm-hmm. with the dishes. Mm-hmm. Did you know what happened next when Aaron came back into the bedroom? <laughs> Aaron would have got these knuckle sandwiches on deck. See, see this that's the best, that's the best part about it. I'm the older brother. So <laughs> yeah. my, my brother couldn't say nothing to yeah, me because yeah, I'm the older yeah, brother. Yeah, so that's yeah. how it worked out. Cause otherwise, oh yeah, no, it was it was not a it was not a smooth game. It was not a not a not a, you mm. could tell right as soon as you saw it, be like, it don't take no dog on five minutes to clean a fork. <laughs> Bro. He was that kid, y'all. Yeah, I was that kid. Yeah. I was that kid. I grew yeah. out of it though. I grew out of it. Yeah. Says he. That's what he's he's claiming. He's grew out of it. I got I got to talk to uh, talk to wifey. See if uh, that's true. <laughs> well, no, and and she'll 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 side. I'll be like I'll be like, uh, is 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 Aaron um, still taking three hours to do the dishes? No, what she'll tell you is that I don't take three hours to do the dishes now. But when I do the, he's dishes... he's trying to get out of his uh, bay do list. Um. Oh no. I, I, okay, maybe I might still be the the the. the, the. <laughs> You said the Bay do list, and as soon as you said it, I was just like, well, actually. Yeah, jogged his memory. Yeah, uh, like, you know, there are some times, you know, I, I don't mind walking the dog, but <laughs> washing the car. I mean, that might be a little. <laughs> Bro, let me tell you, man. Look, when when a, when a guy loves his girl, man, mm-hmm. it's, nothing, it's nothing more powerful than a guy's love for his lady. Listen, my wife, she's got me picking up this daggone dog's crap, taking this dog for a walk <laughs> on the regular every day. And guys, when I tell you, I grew up with just, I, I feel like I might even have like a clinical dog poop phobia. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But it's just the most gross thing, man. <laughs> and I was just like, excuse me. I was telling my wife, if we ever get a dog, I'm not cleaning after, I'm not cleaning up after it. It's going to mm-hmm. be your dog. You're cleaning it. And look at just sucker free. <laughs> just. <laughs> Every single day, I'm out there walking this freaking dog, picking up his nasty crap with the doggy bags, and my hand is filling it through the bag. I can feel it mush in my hand, and I'm looking at myself and going, "You sucker!" No, but the best don't you're leaving out the best part because when y'all come back inside and the dog like hops on your lap, you're just like, "All right, you cool." You you leaving out that part because I know how it goes. Heck no! Oh no! I despise that dog with the passion. You know what? Not, honestly, if I'm honest, I I love to hate him. That's all. We have a love hate okay. relationship. Okay. It's because of the crap. Yeah, you, yeah. I just it, that's this. a pretty solid wall. Because I mean, that's ah. a, that's the thing. Even as a kid, like as and and I, and I love dogs. I love dogs. So like when I walk when I walk Cody the little Chihuahua that we got. Oh man, me and him we, we be bonded. I be the talking to Chihuahua. Him. I said we we be talking every day. I be like, Yo, being on, a Cody. guy of such large stature, yes. I wouldn't see you as. A Chihuahua guy. It is probably the funniest thing when I'm walking that little dog, like in the co- in the condo, and it's like me, my big self, with this little tiny dog, oh. and, he, and the dog is like la 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 la. And I'm like yay la yeah, yeah. Like I'm right behind them and everything. We're like in lockstep. Wow. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I, I'm I'm definitely the hey, come on inside. Like I'm, I mm. come on, let's let's sit on the lap. Oh, oh, your mom not looking. Come on, have on have on have on the couch. Okay, okay. Like I'm that, and nah. I feel I feel like I'll also be like, and granted, you know, children, dogs, not the same children and pets not the same thing but I feel like I'd be that kind of dad too he's he's definitely not in my company getting on the couch maybe once in a blue moon yeah. maybe if it's his birthday I don't know maybe you get a birthday couch <laughs> jump but yeah nah I already told my wife man when we get new furniture he's he's not allowed yeah. well he's new safe. furniture is different we, Especially if we try to like, you know, I want like get a nice leather couch mm-hmm. you can't have oh a, no you can't have a dog you can't have a pit bull on freaking leather nope, nope. 
Nope. Nah. That's going to get ripped up real good. So, I mean, <laughs> we have like, you know, the, the fabric, you know, so for now, you mm-hmm. know, but, you know, then we, even that, you know, you got the, the hair shedding all mm-hmm. you know, I'm vacuuming the sofa. <laughs> I'm picking up dog crap. I was just about to say sucker free vac- strikes again. <laughs> vac sucker free back at it again with the dog vac. <laughs> That's right. And I feel like every moment I'm doing this, the dog's just grimacing at me like, yeah, yeah, you might be headed to the house, but how's that crap feel in your hand, Free? Huh? You like that? It was like, oh, yeah, I had I had extra. I had extra for dinner last night. Wait till the morning. I got you. Dude, and then the wintertime, taking them uh, out early in the morning, you know that you could see the steam coming because it's so cold outside, uh-huh. right? These, the steam's coming up from the crap. Oh my I, god! I will say. So now my hands extra warm through the plastic bag. Uh, <laughs> See, I think you think about it too much because now you got me it's thinking because, about it. <laughs> but it's because I have this phobia. I I hate it. Yeah, no, I I don't even think I, at first. Dude, I, growing it was up, on my listen, mind, but. growing up, I've actually selected spankings over picking up dog crap. Oh wow! Like because that was like you know. I, ha- I had to do it like as a chore you yeah. know, from time to time. Like I remember I had other siblings. So uh-huh. like, you know, I didn't have to do it this every single day. But like, yeah, like I think when it came to that crossroad. Yeah, that was it. My like, it was like, mind you, I, I didn't end up getting in trouble. But the fact that I was willing mm-hmm. was like kind of the aha moment that for my your, parents. That like, was to be your like, line. <laughs> no, for them to be like, wow, this is really serious. Yeah. Like he really just. No, I it's get not, it. It's not rebellion. No, like this is just he really has. <laughs> so I'm just like, look, whoop me, woman, <laughs> whoop my behind. <laughs> I'll take the beating. <laughs> He's like, take this dog out, or you won't get a whooping. I, hey, hey, which, sign which me belt, up. Which where do belt I sign? You, which belt you want? I got leather. I got Brady. <laughs> Tell me where to sign up for the spankings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a switch. I can go grab a switch. That's fine. Yo, it, it, it's funny because I mean, for me, I didn't have a dog growing up. As much as I wanted one, and I do, like I said, I love dogs. I do. I'm cats, meh, but I, I do. I love dogs. But like, I and it made me laugh with the with taking taking the dog out during the cold, because that is the one time where I I will say, especially out here in Connecticut, that's that's the one time. I'm like, all right, Cody, let's go. Come on, man, let's let's, let's, let's hurry this up. Hurry up, bro. And pinch I, that loaf. The Come on. La- the Come last. On. <laughs> That was funny. It's the, the loaf, the, bro. The last because you know how they are. They're doing like, like the step, the step, steps, the trying turn, to get their, their spread right. It's it's crazy. Like a buddy of mine has a dog, and the dog literally goes on like a Usain Bolt sprinting, and then just like, all right, cool, I'm good, and then just goes. And and I was like, why does he do? It? He's like, he got to like get it like jost up. <laughs> I was like, that's a lot, bro. Like I take Cody on the walk, he does his thing, and then we're good. But I I remember when the last snowstorm that we had, and I said, dude is not that big of a dog. He can sit on my lap. He's probably about that big. Mm-hmm. And he gets really excited in the morning because he knows he's going outside. That is like that is like the biggest time uh-huh. out at the in the morning and night when he knows he's going out. That's when he's like super excited. So we woke up that morning and I looked outside and I looked over the street and I said, "That's a lot of snow on the ground." And as soon as I got up, Cody's like, "Oh my god, y'all are up? Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go!" Spinning around circles, and everything. And I said, "All right, dude, we're gonna go outside, but..." I don't think you're going to like it. And he's first run down. He's like a kid in Christmas, running down the stairs first, spinning, so excited and everything. So I'm like, I'm telling you, dude, I don't think, like, I'm talking to him. Because I said, this is how I talk to him. I'm like, dude, I don't think you're going to like this. I, all right, you, you, you scratch it. I, I don't think you're going to. Okay. So then I put him in his harness and everything, got his leash and everything. I put my coat jacket on, get him settled. And then he walks outside. He and like there's like a little um like um almost like a like a midway point before you get outside. Actually outside, so you walk out the front door and there's like a little little area and then you go out into the front, go out the door and outside. And I open the door, and I don't think the wind hit him immediately. I think the the wind hit him mid jump, but he jumped to go outside and froze in midair. And it, it looked like it because as he was in midair. He jumped and landed, and when he landed, he was gone. <laughs> he just dropped into the snow and was gone. Vanished. I have never seen a dog, and I said, I've had, like, in some capacity, been in this dog's life. This dog's been in my life for, like, 10 years. I have never seen him. Do- he And as soon as he hit the snow, he got up, turned around, and jumped right back in the house and was like, yeah. you, you tried to warn me. Yeah. I, 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 I wasn't feeling it. It's, it's not. So, yes, I'm with you he when said, it comes to the cold and taking the dog out. That's said, the only time. He said, you didn't try hard enough. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't try to save me hard enough. No, you Aaron. was just too excited. He was yeah. too excited. So that, sometimes you got to learn that lesson. You got to learn that nah, lesson. Nah, man. <laughs> Nah, mm. I've been trying to, uh, aside from painting or finishing all the painting, getting ready for the baby. Yep. Um, 
I well because I'm, I've already been doing kind of balancing or trying to balance, uh, you know, the full time entrepreneur thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, since uh, October November last year. Excuse me again. Um, uh, so that's been you know fruitful. It's been really really um, it, you know the business is growing here in the studio. Um, you know, uh, being able to also executive produce uh, some other podcast um so that's been really really cool um but so i've been already trying to balance like my time with family Mm -hmm. and growing a a new business Mm -hmm. you know platform and you know doing all the social media engagement things and all that uh marketing like that you know how much that can take a lot of just time Mm -hmm. to really organically grow things Absolutely. Of course, I could simply just pay for followers if I want it. Um, who wants to do that? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. And then that'll save me a ton of time. Um, <laughs> but those followers uh, don't tem- tend to uh, engage. No, with not you. at all. That's yeah. what I was going to say. It's, l- it's less organic. Yeah, the robots tend to uh, just stare <laughs> at you. <laughs> but anyways, so trying to balance that. And then um, there's always like the in-law uh like balance or really family in general. Like, so there's like kind of, you know, in an acute sense, the family in my home. Yeah. Um, but also just trying to, this season in my life and my, me and my wife's lives, trying to be intentional and more purposeful with the relationships outside of our home mm-hmm. could be just challenging in general by itself. But then also, like I said, all of my time really as of late going into trying to build this business, mm-hmm. I'm extra busy. Um, granted, it's a good busy, you know, because I'm busy doing what it is I feel, you know, I was born to do, created Absolutely. to do, right? Um, which is, you know, just really just using my voice and my gift. So I find myself when at least when it comes to like, let's just say, for instance, my uh, my ma- mother in law. Okay. Right. That's one in law relationship that I feel has been really like divinely just blessed by God Mm -hmm. because I hear about other people's like horror stories with like a Mm mother-in-law and just thank God that's not mine. Um, I have like over the, you know, the, me and my wife has been married for five years. Mm -hmm. I have found the ways to both view my Mm mother-in-law and love her in a way that is sometimes or could be challenging for my wife. Okay. So I think what happens is I, I get to act as like a, a, a counterweight mm-hmm. or like this balance mm-hmm. for this triangle mm-hmm. of me, my wife, and her mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. Her, uh, her mother. My father-in-law, you know, passed away <clears throat> a couple years ago. So it's just mom, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I think that's what, you know, I had some people, you know, some of the followers, you know, they commented, you know, when I you know do my topic gathering from social media that they, you know, wanted help or wanted to, you know, us to discuss, you know, the in-law dynamics and how to deal, quote unquote, deal with in-laws. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like I said, I've been blessed to have that positive kind of experience. Um, I will say it hasn't always been that when mm-hmm. we first met. Mm-hmm. Um I kind of had to like work on that a lot, but I think what I saw early on is an opportunity for me to be a bridge for my wife and her own mother, Mm -hmm. right? So I could either be a bridge and actually if this thing could actually work out good, Mm -hmm. and and I saw how that could actually be behooving for me Mm -hmm. within my home, right? Because the less my wife is at odds with her mother Mm -hmm. outside our home, yeah the nicer of a wife I have in the home. home. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Because we all know whether you're, you know, the boyfriend or the husband or whatever, whatever committed relationship you're in, you know, if the other person you're in the relationship with is pissed off at one, uh, one of their parents, That's they're, br- gonna they're, they're bringing that pissed, uh, pissed off itness to you. Absolutely. Like it's going to have a trickle down effect. Yeah. You're going to be like, Hey babe, what's wrong with you? Ah, uh, just, I can't get enough of them. They're getting on my nerves. Okay. You're going to have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear about it. Um, so why not be a tool for just better relationship. Yeah. Well, so my question to you based off of that, because it's interesting that you would say that because I feel like sometimes I'm put in a position as much as, you know, my family, nobody's family's perfect. You know what I mean? Like as much as I love my family, nobody's family's perfect. I feel like sometimes I'll be put in that scenario in like, in like your wife's role where it's like you try not to bring that into the 
relationship, do you ever feel like when you're trying to, you know, play that play that middle person, play that ground where you know trying to play like you said that counterweight, yeah, that yeah. you end up getting caught trying, up trying in to it? be the bridge. Exactly. Do um, you ever feel like you get caught up in the mess? And if well, so, well, how what, does that? How you does have that? You'd, I have you'd have to define caught up for me. What caught is that, up what does in that the mean? sense of like. In your attempt to try and be the bridge and try and be the counterweight, it ends up backfiring, for for lack of a better term. Have okay. you ever been caught in that situation? And if so, what is that like? Um, hmm. I have to say no. Okay. I haven't. I ha- it, it hasn't backfired. It's only been. Um, it's only led to something positive. Mm-hmm. But I again, I say that's from me really having like that foresight in in a, in an eye on the bigger picture. Okay. Right? So I I will say almost every single situation I could see I could say it was an opportunity for it to backfire. It definitely could have. Oh yeah. Every single one. Mm. Um but I'm like another I think another tool I use is I'm a person who's like direct with everybody. Yeah. Right? So I'm not afraid to tell my wife Bay, that was wrong. Okay. Yeah. Concerning the in law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife is only able to, I think, receive that mm. well because she also knows I'm willing to stand in front of her mother also and say, Ma, that, that was, was wrong. wrong. Okay. You know what I mean? There's a consistency that's it's consistent. Built. Yeah. So when I interject with a reputation and history of consistency, mm-hmm. it allows all the Re, you know, relevant players to receive the bridge called free. Got it. Like free is able to be an effective bridge, mm-hmm. but what do bridges in real life have to be for cars to successfully get across them? They got to connect. They have to, they have to consistently mm-hmm. stay in place. Yeah. Yeah. I have to, that which I was constructed at a literal bridge, mm-hmm. that which I was constructed to be, mm-hmm. I must remain that way for the vehicles traveling across me to to be daring enough to cross me every day to commute to work. Gotcha. The minute someone hears in the news, such and such bridge <laughs> cracked, <laughs> broke down, I guarantee you, I don't care how much patchwork and how much the news then tries mm-hmm. to tell me, oh, the bridge has been repaired. It's okay that now. Tr- that trust of going over it the without trust, thinking about it is gone. People are not, they're like, I'm taking the long way to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You lose something in being inconsistent yes. with your relationships and, and definitely with in-law relationships, mm-hmm. you have. But I think what happens is you have one person, you know, inside the home, whether it's you know you and your girl or mm-hmm. you know you and your husband, whatever it is, right? And either the wife is able to or not able to tell the husband when he's wrong, but uh, you know, can say one thing to her parents or vice versa. Maybe the wife is able to, uh, um, they can tell you know the husband when he's wrong, but not say that to the in-laws. And then that, then you have resentment, you have strife mm-hmm. because you're not able to, you're not being consistent or, or, or you'll say, uh, well, you know what? No, you're only just trying to defend your mother or defend, mm-hmm. you know, so, yeah. you have, the, you have that problem now in, was, in the house, what, right? Yeah. It's like now you guys are at each other's throat for that reason, because, okay, you could tell me about myself and tell me how I was wrong. Oh, mm-hmm. but you, can you tell your mother? Yeah. Can you tell your mother that? And I'm a mama's boy. Yeah. So, so I. I definitely <laughs> had to be like, careful of that because i know one i know it's true it's how, who i am mm-hmm. but two i know how that could be perceived from my wife mm-hmm. is that okay she might think i'm only being like this or saying this because mm-hmm. i love my mama mm-hmm. right but no she's also seen me i could stand in front of my mother and go that was wrong yeah it's it's having that level like you're saying that level of consistency and that level of honesty that people have a a, a level of trust with you to know that genuine things are coming out of your mouth when it comes to anything, let alone this situation that we can find yeah. ourselves in. Yeah. It could be two people fighting over over a or I don't know, over a stick or something. And it's like, oh, but they broke that stick. Oh, I want but if you can interject into that situation and say, like, no, whose stick was the first? This is what I think. And it and it's not only honest, but it's genuine. It's it's something that it's put in a way that people aren't looking like you're taking a people look at it like you're taking a side. Yeah, yeah. And you're just looking to get to a peaceful resolution to the situation Mm -hmm. i think that goes a very long way especially like you said we're dealing with in-laws in-laws family in general i think that's because i think there's so much 
That's 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 mother, cousins yep. in law, aunties in law, and all of it. <laughs> all of it. And no, and that's honest because I think part of that is also when you have when you deal with family stuff and you know everybody's got family stuff. Like I said, there's no perfect family. Some of that can get, you know, there can be past resentment. There can mm-hmm. be past hurts. There can be, you know, anger. Oh, I, I ain't seen her. She ain't, she ain't coming to the last cookout. So now, now I ain't having a conversation. With, you know, how, so you know yeah. how it being so is. But there's always got to be at least that one person in the family that can, you know, bring everyone into the room and sit them down and have that conversation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know back in the day, you know, at least in my family, it used to be like my grandmother used to do. It. Before my grandmother passed, that was that was it. If grandma said something, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you too. Y'all better stop fighting. <laughs> and so that that's kind of how it was. Like yeah, yeah, regardless sure. of how things were going, like and, I, and I'm I'm thinking about my grandmother on my mother's side, like no matter how if there was drama, no matter if somebody wasn't talking to somebody, no matter it all it took was one call to my grandmother. Yeah. One call to my grandmother, and she found out about the situation. That's it. Yeah. She's interjecting. She's interjecting with honesty. She's interjecting with love. She's interjecting with with a y'all love each other. We are a family. We're not doing this. And it's just there was a level of respect that you had mm-hmm. as someone that, and and I would assume it's the same way when you interject. There's a level of respect that that person that is coming to intercede on a, in a situation that they command in that situation because yeah, yeah. they're not looking for any kind of personal gain out of this. I mean, like, yeah, my grandmother didn't want us to fight, but like, other than that, yeah. there is no person. I'm saying same situation. You don't want, you know, you don't want there to be strife or f- in, in fight or anything yeah, in your yeah. family. So I guess that's the quote unquote only personal gain, but it's to better the entire situation in a peaceful way. And I think that's a really important distinction to have at least one person in the family that can do that. Well, I think the, I'm trying to think of what are the the like hiccups or hurdles people are having in general mm-hmm. um when it comes to uh you know dealing with in-laws um mm-hmm. when when people were putting this topic in the in the chat in the chat mm-hmm. or in the comment section I I want to kind of you know cuz they didn't give me details mm-hmm. right like so I kind of want to try to think of what what is it that they're actually looking for or needing help with um and I would say, you know, obviously the being consistently you, mm-hmm. you know, whoever you, I, I hope the version of you uh, or what is the you, quote unquote, is is something benevolent. Mm-hmm. Right. Like if you're an uh, evil person, don't be consistently you. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, but hopefully um, you're you know, you mean well, and you're a good individual, you're kind, whatever, yeah. all the all the above. Um, so be consistent. Um, if that's who you are, be that way inside your house and outside of your house, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I think that's like a good baseline to start with when dealing with in-laws. Mm-hmm. Um, what's another good baseline and now, to start with? Granted, I don't have in-laws, but I have, you know, essentially in-laws. Yeah, but yeah. I think on top of being yourself, one of the big things that you can you can always, at least in my in my dealings, always extend that olive branch. And not olive branch in the sense of, Oh, something went wrong, so you got to be the bigger person. But extend just like a, you want to go to lunch? Yeah, because you, that's you what I, that's what the rebuttal I think is going to be is people are going to say, well, you know, what? I'm always the one that's extending the olive branch. Yeah, but you're I don't want to always keep being the one that's uh, trying to like bring peace and come back to restore, be the one to apologize first. Like that's going to be, or I've heard that be a complaint constantly. I think first of all, you got to look at it from a die to self situation in that in that because I know I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you, Aaron. Honestly, I, people I are going to go, I, but I'm always dying to self. Yeah, but I need them to die a little bit. <laughs> you need them to die a little bit, but then that's something that to your point. <laughs> Tell him that his mother need to die a little bit. <laughs> I'm sick of dying. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I don't die to Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think to, you know what I'm saying? I've been crucified. You know this mom out here crucifying me. I think I think one of the things yeah. too with that though is that's a conversation. If you have built a relationship with that person because you've extended that quote unquote olive branch, you've built a relationship, you shouldn't feel you shouldn't hesitate to be able to say, Hey, look, I feel this way. Because if that relationship has been built up and that relationship is strong enough, maybe I'm not even this, but that relationship is built up and strong enough, I feel like you can have that conversation and say the way the same way how going back to you, you're an honest, genuine person that everything you say, they they can respect and understand that that's coming from a completely unbiased stamp standpoint. If somebody's feeling some type of way with an in-law and, and a relationship has been built there, 
that's a conversation because but that's the thing, Aaron. They're trying to build a relationship. So I'm. I think, I think. I think. I think people are having the in law issues. Okay. In out the of the relationship. No, in the beginning of relationship, like people are got just it. getting married, got or it. Got it. you know, maybe we've still in that first five years of our relationship, mm-hmm. whatever it is. So they're trying to build that, and I think the 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 pitfalls are the hindrance to building that, right? Okay. So we're going, what are the building blocks needed to build mm-hmm. the, the the healthy in-law relationship that you're referring to? Got it. I think you're on the other side yeah, of Yeah, I've already crossed the bridge. Yeah, I'm Got talking it. about the how do we get from the beginning okay. to the other side. So being consistent, um, I think being honest, Yeah. right? Always, I, I also always, think that comes in with consistency. I think that goes hand in hand. Yeah, like, all right, being consistent, being honest. Mm-hmm. Um I think, treating treating their child right, <laughs> I think that goes a long way. Yeah, I mean, I, but see, then all right, if we had, if I had like some words of advice for the for the in laws, right? Mm-hmm. So this is for the parents, yep, right, not for the the couple. Um, you have to. Wow, as I literally just got ready to fix my mouth to say those words, I retracted them and found a reason to do so. I wasn't gonna say. The in-laws have to know where the line is not to cross. Yes. But then immediately when I thought before I spoke, I said, you know what? I'm not sure I believe that's actually their job. I think that's the couple's job. To put the boundary the, down. The Absolutely. couple's job is to let the in-laws know where the line is. Yeah. I don't the, think it's, it's I the, don't think the, the in-laws actually know that it's the in-laws once the line is drawn the in-laws have to respect that yeah that's where that's, that's where it comes in but but if there's no line that has been confidently then by you ain't the crossing couple, you ain't crossing nothing <laughs> exactly there's the, the the line is blurred or non-existent mm-hmm. and so then you have couples who now get upset with the in-laws because oh they're crossing the line well did you communicate mm-hmm. what the lines are because a lot of times in the beginning, infant stages, there's a lot of just feeling out where yeah. the line is. Yeah. And so it's it's no offense meant. Case in point, you have that in-law who they just show up at your house unannounced. Yeah. Well, you know what? Hey, son, before you married my daughter, my daughter was totally fine mm-hmm. with her dad just popping up. Yeah. And now she's married you. And, you know, you seem to have a problem with that. Talking about, can I text first? Yeah. Can I call first? Well, you know what, Mr. So-and-so? You know what? When you want it to pop up now, me and old wife here, your daughter, no offense, sorry, no sorry, we might just be a little busy in the bedroom yeah. right now, okay? But that's not something so, you need to walk in on. So I, exactly. <laughs> I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just saying, I might not want to be interrupted prematurely yeah. and come get the door for you. Exactly. I'd rather you call first, <laughs> okay? And I feel like that's, but in, in, in all seriousness, I know we joking about it, but I feel like that's not a ridiculous no, boundary. That's a, that's a respectable, yeah. honest to goodness so boundary. It takes, so it takes those feelers yeah. if I don't say that. I, it first yeah. it first takes the dad showing up unannounced one mm-hmm. time, and now it becomes will I be will I be courageous and bold enough to say, hey, you know, no no big deal, you yeah. know, what I mean, it was cool, you know, today, you know, what I mean, we was home, like you know, we always love seeing you, uh, yeah. pops, but can, you know, next time, could you just you know shoot, give me a call because you know, what I mean, I don't want to you know us not be here, you mm-hmm. come all the way from. Home. You know delivery I mean? is very important in this situation. Delivery is incredibly important because you can't come at a thousand miles a minute and not expect there to be tension. You got to be able to exactly. kind of even, even the way because at the same time, there is still a respect that has to be given to the parents of the person that you are with. There yes. is still a level of respect that has to be. Now, yes. there's a level of respect they have to return to you. Yes. But energy is going to meet energy. Yes. If you come in at a 10, they're going to meet you at that 10. Yeah, and yeah, not only yeah, that, yeah. it's going to cause tension because they're going to go back to their child and be like, so what's going on here? But if you yeah. are respectable about it, you at like a two and just, you know, direct, not yeah, yeah, not yeah, yeah. overly stern, but honest and like, you know, yep. straightforward about it. Yeah. They're going to, and, and at least in that situation, I can't think of a man alive that wouldn't respect like, all right, that makes sense. I apologize. It makes and, sense. And then we go from there. But it, it that clear line in the sand has to be drawn. And that doesn't yeah, necessarily yeah. mean it's a negative thing. It is just a honest to goodness boundary of, you know, I understand this is your child, but like, yeah, you know, yeah. this is my husband. I think this it is my really wife. takes this that. Is somebody that like. Yeah, it are, takes that boldness to. Yes. To, speak and say where that line is and, and it's i think it's a boldness that if i had another i guess a, another word of advice for the couples and you know trying to navigate your in-law relationships mm-hmm. it's going to take that 
person uh, who's in the home with you to encourage your boldness. Yes. Right. Like to know that they got your back in that. Right. So if I'm speaking to, you know, I'm I'm ready to like boldly let my, you know, girl's dad or, you know, my wife's, uh, you know, dad know where this particular line is. Right. In total, like, you know, humility and respect. I need my wife inside the home backing me on that. Exactly. Like not like not like uh, I have the conver- conversation with dad as he's leaving from the visit. Right. Mm-hmm. I come back inside, the day goes, the rest of the day goes smoothly, no issue. And then later on, the dad calls his daughter and is like, What was that? Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, Free told me, you know, that, you know, he really didn't uh like me popping up unannounced. He Hold didn't on. appreciate that. Yeah, he didn't appreciate through. that, right? Right? And then and then all of a sudden, you know, wife's like, What? I didn't know that, Dad. Or I don't mind. And then now I got the wife coming at me, right? Yeah. See how, see, there's that split. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So the two, the couple have to be on the same page. Mm-hmm. Think, find their boundary together as one. Mm-hmm. And then now present on a, on a single front. These are the boundaries to the in-laws. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a healthy beginning. Granted, in-law dynamics and dealing with in-laws is like an entire probably two plus hour episode in itself. <laughs> I think, but we, we could get just, some in-laws on here. <laughs> bruh, we, could, we could just give the, the kind of foundation, some couple foundation pieces. Um, and I think those are, those are, those are a couple good ones, you know, being consistent, uh, being honest and you letting the in-laws know where the lines are. They will not, they're not going to know. They're not going to know. They're not going to know unless you put that down. Yeah, they're not, they're gonna not gonna gonna know because everybody's different mm-hmm. um, and everybody line is different. It's, it's not something like, you know, we can't say this is like a social norm, right? Because families are these little kind of like micro societies, unique micro societies mm-hmm. in their own. Fa- the inner workings of families are not necessarily the same in every single family on the planet. Yeah. Right. So we can't go. We can't take. We can't take social norms and overlay them over the families we get married into. It's and not, go. Oh, this is this is the norm for mm-hmm. all families. Like, mm-hmm. no, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you walk into an elevator, you instantly step into the elevator and turn around and face. The, the door. elevator doors. No one walks into an elevator and stares at the back wall. Not gonna lie, if I ever got into an elevator, somebody was staring at the back wall. I'm getting off of that elevator. <laughs> you say, but, but why? Because that's a social norm. Yeah. It applies really to everybody, mm-hmm. right? So we can't have. We can't think of when we think of marriage and doing family together with new, you know, families that we're married into. We can't go. Well, what I would do when my family mm-hmm. is this, I'm gonna expect the person I married into their family should think the same way. No, no. I think the social and norm is not the right word here because I don't think it's consistent across the board that, you know, folks have good, if not great relationships with their in-laws. I think that's, yeah. you know, it's not few and far between, but I don't think everyone has that same experience. But I feel like there is still always human decency, human human respect. And that is yeah. the, the quote unquote social norm. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, to your point. There is no one size fits all when it comes to this. Yeah. Like I said, respect is respect, but there is no one size fit all to be able yeah. to say, you know, we want this to happen. Or, you know, we in our family we do this and you just are supposed to know. That's yeah. not how it works. I mean, nah. and that's where it goes back to what you were saying, where it's like, you know, when you're together and you come with that united front, it goes a long way for a the respect factor from the in laws because they're gonna say, all right, this is someone that's taking care of my son. This someone's taking care of my daughter. This is someone that you know I have to respect their relationship, their marriage. I have to yep. be in that place. And not Absolutely. only that, I'm respecting that line that they're putting down. And for from from their perspective, it's like. I don't want to be disrespectful to this person. This is someone who raised the person I'm in love with. We just want to make sure that, you know, we are on the same page. And that's Absolutely. what it boils down to. That's really what. Now, granted, I will also say that as a caveat is I don't have in-laws. <laughs> so hey. I will say that as a caveat. So this is but this is just how I've interacted with, like I said, my girlfriend's parents who I've known yeah, for yeah, over yeah. 10 years now. So I think, like I said, our relationship yeah. has been great. My mother. Loves you've, you've already been building that relationship. So you're, you're exactly. you know, at the point where you actually mm-hmm. become 
you know, officially, you know, mm-hmm. uh, they become your in-laws. You know, mm-hmm. it'll already be groundwork that you've you've already established yourself as a person who's consistent, mm-hmm. who's honest. Um, that groundwork was it was yeah. it was awkward at first though because like yeah. I was like the first dude that she brought around her family like that. So this was a new experience for her yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that I had to think about in my head. Like, you know, like to be fair, like I had girlfriends in high school and stuff that like met my parents. So mm-hmm. like in my head, I was like, oh, this is like a thing. But like there was a legitimate level of hesitancy because she didn't even know how her f- folks were going to act like towards me. And I looked at her like, yeah, I met parents before. It's not a big deal. And like her parents, <laughs> no, to be honest, again, a little I've nice. done this before. <laughs> I've done so this before. You know, it's something like. Bring them in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see them. I've done this before. Yo, to bring them in was great, but <laughs> it, it was, and it, and it's it's funny because I don't think I I don't think I looked at it from that point until I you know got you know closer with her dad and closer with her mom and everything like that. And like I love her parents; they're really great. Yeah. But I can tell there was a there was a time period for them to get comfortable with me, and that's something also that was as I look back on it interesting to see because. They were, you know, always nice, always cordial and everything like that. But there was definitely like that, that period there. I don't even remember how long it was where it was just like, all right, we acknowledge you as the person who's dating our daughter. But who are you really? In that kind of aspect. Yeah, yeah. And so I had to be, you know, not only cool with that, but I just, you know, I was genuinely myself. I was genuinely consistent. I was genuinely honest. Yeah. And I think that went a long way because, you know, we're still, you know, here we are. And they, you know, I haven't gotten thrown still out like here. jazz. Like, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. <laughs> I mean, her dad's about, about the same height as me, maybe a little bit taller. Yeah, so he yeah. could have thrown me out like jazz. So I'm, I, you know, I guarantee you, 10 years in, he done sized you up already. <laughs> <laughs> if that boy ever getting messed up, boy. I mean, I, hey. so, so, and, and, I don't want to take too much longer on 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 this on the night, but I wanted to ask you, you know, down the road when your daughters bring home someone and how have you thought about that? And have you thought about what that from when not just you having the in-laws, but now when you become the in-law? Has, yeah, has yeah. that thought crossed your mind? And what's that been like? Yeah, it has, because uh, I have a um, my oldest is 18. OK. And, um, you know, she's. um she has a, a relationship uh, with a young man, mm-hmm. and um, uh, at least you know I don't know these these things evolve with kids these days. This young like every day. So last I checked, uh, she <laughs> you'll find out in a little bit. <laughs> last I checked, right? Yeah. Um, but so I like to, you know, with my kids, I'm really kind of this. Um, not overwhelming or overburden some like parent, like at least when it comes to that that age. And mm-hmm. I've I've discussed with my kids in like the recent years what life between us would evolve into mm-hmm. as they got older. Mm-hmm. You know, I I've told them things like we'll have less uh, pep talks. Uh, less unsolicited pep talks <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> from dad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, unless you need one, unless yeah. you come to me. Yeah. Uh, but as as you get older, I want to be kind of this like less overbearing or you know invasive entity in your life. I want to I want to be established in your life as a point of consistency, a point of strength, mm-hmm. uh, something that you can return to because you know I'll always be there, mm-hmm. right where you left me last Mm -hmm. um not something that's always following you not something that's always inquiring of you you know what i mean not a helicopter yeah (laughs) trying to like just gently you know gradually let go Mm -hmm. over time and let you evolve and be whoever it is you're going to be um so yeah that's been that but that's definitely uh because you know the kids are getting up there in age Mm -hmm. like i got the 18 year old now uh in july i'll have a 16 year old my uh, later at the end of this year, my youngest daughter will be thirteen. I have three teenagers, mm-hmm. man. Good luck. <laughs> uh, all girls, right? Yeah, that part luck, too. Man. So it's like you know, I and I think because I, you know, just me being raised by a, a pack of women, women, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, having all girls, you know, daughters, I think it's allowed me to really just you know, as a man, be just really balanced yeah. in my just okay. emotionally in my thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, still very much, you know, a man's man. Like, so, you know, 
Uh, any any dudes out there that get it messed up, twisted with my girls, you know. Yeah. I was just about I got to say, these hands for I was you. about to say when you, I was laughing. Got these knuckle the, sandwiches. I was, I was laughing when you said the the size them up because I remember every single dude that now, like I said, my sister's engaged now. Her wedding's coming up in in June, and like I remember every single dude that my that like dated my sister between like her like senior year of high school, graduating through college, and everything now. And every time my dad met them. My dad would turn into Mr. Johnson. He was Mike. He was Mike to oh. that point, and then he was Mr. Johnson. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> and then the size him up all and all day. that stuff would come, and I'd Mr. be like, yeah. "All right, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, Mr. Mr. Elliot, man. That's what, how you doing? How you doing? You know, I gotta bring the bass out of my voice. How you doing, son? I, I would literally turn to him. I'd be like, That's "Are you right. okay? Like, you want a lozenge?" That's right. <laughs> I, all of a sudden, I turn into Bane. From the, <laughs> you think darkness is your ally. You merely adopted the dark. Oh my gosh. I was I was born in it. Molded. Molded by it. You're gonna make me watch Batman tonight. It's Friday, so I can watch, go home and watch Batman. By the time I saw the light, I was already a man, and by then it was only blinding. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're gonna make me watch Batman. I love that. I love I that lo- scene. But, I love that scene, man. Like oh. Yo. You see the new one? Nah, man, I gotta see it. Though. I gotta see the new one. I'm gonna go see a movie tomorrow for uh, another date night with the wife. Oh, man. nice, nice. Speaking Maybe of which, one. the wife, I gotta get out of here. Nice. Wrap up our studio, but like every episode, man, uh, we gotta have something that's free food for the soul. Um, you know, just like lunch feeds the body. Mm-hmm. It's free lunch. Mm-hmm. So we gotta. Uh, what's the takeaway uh, today, Aaron? What do we want the audience to leave with? edifying for their souls i think the biggest thing is do not be afraid to set boundaries with your loved ones but doing so understand that you know you're doing it in in the situation that we talked about with the in-laws you're doing it after speaking with your significant other after speaking with your wife or husband and coming together as one and and one deeming this as the appropriate course but also you know understanding that you, you know you are in that position to be to, to set that boundary. You're in the position to do mm. that. There is a level of respect and there's a level of, of you know, dignity and love that is in, that you are in that position as the wife, as the husband, together that you can do. So I think putting down boundaries, understanding what those boundaries are, and doing it together. That was fire. I don't have a follow-up, guys. Yeah. He, uh, he nailed that one. It's the- free lunch. They're better than my last time. (laughs) Free food for the soul, y'all. Peace.